Hello everyone, my name is Vincent. I'm 26 years old and I was born in Venezuela, but now I'm living here in Ecuador, another country in South America. This video um, is being made with the purpose of talking about the differences between Venezuelan Spanish and Ecuadorian Spanish. As everybody know, we have the standard version of every language. We have it for Spanish, we have it for English, French, and other languages that are spoken all over the world. When I came here, I have to use first the standard Spanish, just to be understood and to understand other people. Because every single country and even uh, cities within these countries shared or have different words and this is based on their cultural, social, and economical backgrounds. For instance, when I came here for the first time, I had to learn many new words, and even words in Quechua, just to understand what people were saying to me. I have to start this video saying that um, the differences can be very determining in the way we convey our meaning and message to the person that is listening to us or reading our messages. There are some words that here in Ecuador can be a little bit rude, but in Venezuela, they are not any rude at all. Um, there is one word that for me was really, let's say tricky and confusing, because in Spanish, we have one word that is coger. In my country, we use this word when you are gonna grab something. For example, I'm gonna grab Let's say I'm going to grab a tool. We'd say, voy a coger esa herramienta, right? This is in Spanish. Um, but we use it only for things, right? Or for, yeah, only for things. And not for people or animals. Because it can be a little bit rude. And it can mean something very different from grabbing something. But here, people use it when they make reference to people. And they would say something like, some things like, um, te voy a coger a las cinco, which means pick up, right? I'm going to pick you up at 5 p.m. Uh, for them, it's totally normal to make this or say this utterance. But for me, it was really confusing and tricky. Like, I'm going to be with you in a sexual way. So that is why we're very cautious when we use this word with people, right? But here... People, like speakers, use it here when they make reference to other people. For example, I'm going to pick you up can be te voy a coger, right? For me, this is something that is that sounds really uh, tricky in my mind because I can imagine something very different since the conception that I have of these words is that it means something that is sexual, right? But... I have learned here that these words have other uses and that you can use it with people, but only here. Of course, if I go to if I go back to Venezuela, I have uh, to use a different word just to mean pick you up, like uh, like paso por ti, something like this. Because if I use this word, then I'm gonna be in trouble because people are going to think that I'm really really rude, and I really don't want that to happen. Uh, another thing that I have learned here is the use of words coming from the Quechua language. Quechua is a language that is spoken in Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and parts of Chile and parts of Colombia. Uh, this is part of the heritage from the Inca culture. And here, as, uh, as they have, you know, civilization from the Inca times, they use some words still, words like and just to fit in this new society, I have to learn the customs, the local customs that people use and have here in order to fit and have a place here. Because um, as I work every day with people from this country, if I speak really fast, like I would do in Venezuela, people would not understand me. Because as we speak really fast, we um, elide some sounds that for them can be difficult to understand since they always pronounce every single sound in every word they say. So uh, what I had to do first when I came here or the first weeks or months, uh, I have to learn to speak Spanish again, like, or just adapt the Spanish that I had, like to use more formal words, to use another tone, another pitch, and just to pronounce every single sound in every sentence. 
uh, I would say that this experience has been really rewarding because um, I can switch. Let's say that I can switch from one dialect to another. Well, just to end this video, I have to say that there isn't uh, a dialect that is better than the other. Every dialect is unique. And I have learned a lot. Even words that uh, are from the Spanish, from the standard Spanish that I didn't know in the past or that I didn't use. I came to use them here. Uh, words that I regarded as old as are used here. And it's really funny just to realize that how the Spanish language has changed many different parts of the world, right? Like we can be very close, but it, it, like, like the changing and variation process can never be stopped. Um, I would say that when there are variations in a language is what make it is what makes languages rich because they can have their own identity built upon um, as I said before, cultural, uh, social, and geographical points of view. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have liked it. And if you have any questions, you can just drop it on the comment box. That If I have the answer, of course, I will just help you with this information. And I hope one day you can learn more about Ecuador and Venezuela. They are beautiful countries. Thank you very much.